ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Okay, welcome to the June 20th, 2024 Arlington School Committee meeting. Um, we have a pretty quick agenda here for our last meeting of the year. Um, and we are gonna go ahead and get started with um, public comment. We do have somebody here for public comment uh, this evening. So uh, for those of the public who wish to address the committee, there will be 30 minutes of public comment. If you would like to sign up to speak, either remotely via Zoom or in person, you must email uh, Elizabeth Diggins by 6 o'clock p.m. Thursday, the date of the meeting. Depending on how many people sign up, time allotments may be reduced but will not exceed three minutes each. The number of people, so this is, we, we only have one person signed up for public comment. So um, all requests to speak uh, received will be invited to speak at the next school committee regular meeting. So um, we have Alexis Horn Snyder here with us on Zoom. So hi Alexis, <coughs> welcome. Um, you have three minutes. So typically we don't respond um, to public comment. Um, it sometimes comes up later in the meeting, um, but uh, you, you won't hear back from us directly, but we appreciate you coming. We can't, sorry, we can't actually can't, I can't hear you. So let's hold on just a second until we, it could be on our end. Cause you're, I see you're unmuted on your thing. So hold on just a second. Yeah, not yet. I'm very confident it's on our end. You can hear me just fine, right? Yeah, okay. They're working on it. Allison, can you say something? We can see if we can hear you. You can hear us. Can we hear you? No. Okay, all right. All right. Thanks for your patience, all. Oh, yeah. perfect. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It's, no, no, sorry. We're on a, we're, we've got a ton of feedback in the room here. See how you're doing and how your how your temper's holding up. And you seem really chill. So. I was actually in very cold air conditioning all day, so I'm more in shock than anything else. All of a sudden, my download started going to my desktop. One, two, one, two, one, two. Test, test. One, two, one, two, one, two.
test, test, test. One, two, one, two. <coughs> test, test, test. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two, test, test. One, two. Test, test, test. One, two. Test, 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 test. Someone on Zoom uh, speak if they can hear me. Can you can just look at her and yes, see we can hear you. Her? Yeah, I can hear you. Whether or not, um, can you hear me? I can switch to my cell phone. Oh, I, I can hear you. It's uh, there okay. was a little bit like if we did, right now. If we did public comment through your computer, it wouldn't be like on the recording, right? Yeah, they won't get it. Which is probably good. Do you want to move on to another agenda item on the city of Maybe. Do you want me to do it on my we phone? We prove something. Can we approve yes. something? <laughs> <laughs> Just because uh, they can hear us. Yeah, except, so, but then we're going to boot all these people out. Yeah, no, it's not, well, not ideal. Is ACMI going to be broadcasting if they're still working on it? Well, we're getting audio. It's just the audio. So we're we're going going to run. Run. Okay, so can we, could we run public comment off of Liz Diggins computer so that we yeah. can hear it and then, but it would still be. Policy feedback, but. Because we certainly want it, we need to be able to hear Alexis, obviously, um, but it also needs to be. But if we're all so quiet, if we turn down the sound on the room. All right, so turn the sound down there and let. Again. Alexis, can you try and talk to us again? No, no, we're good right now. We're good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience. Go ahead. We're listening. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to speak with regards to having a four session at Hardy for the incoming kindergarten class. I am a parent of an incoming kindergartner, and I refer to the May 23rd notes as well as the uh, Facebook uh, posting that I was refer um, that um, was forwarded to me. I'm not on Facebook. So. Hardy's uh, kindergarten grade as of uh, June 12th, as I saw in this table, has 61 kids in three sections with an average of 20 kids each. Today, it appears the average class size is up um, to, I've heard, around 22, 23 kids a class, which is um, approximately 66, 69 kids total. And my question is, why wouldn't the increased enrollment and the highest in the town among all elementary schools with three sections Warrant keeping a fourth kindergarten teacher who I've heard is excellent. I, along with other parents, are curious and look forward to be educated on when four section when 
an additional section or a fourth section is kept or not year to year. From my perspective, a fourth kindergarten teacher is already at the school, the classroom set up, and it's been proven that lower enrollment, um, sorry, lower kids per class is better for both kids and teachers. And uh, the question really is um, next year's enrollment numbers could be in line or higher. And then the school would have to spend money to go out and, and rehire a fourth teacher um, to find, train, and integrate into, into the school. So I, I did anecdotally hear uh, two years ago that kids and teachers had a difficult time with just three sections and a higher average of kids per class. Well, this past year, four sections for the kindergarten grade worked great for all. So I'm just encouraging the committee um, to, to think about taking a multi-year view, a longer term view in this specific case. And um, thank you for your time. Great, thank you so much, Alexis. Yes, please. Yeah. Thanks. Great, okay, so the next um, item on our agenda is the update on the physician position, Dr. Holman and Mr. Siegel. Okay, so um, Doreen Crow, the Director of Nursing, has been working on uh, this posting, we have an opening for a school physician as our longtime school physician has recently um, retired. So um, the position has been posted on SchoolSpring on our website and social media accounts. It is set to close tomorrow. They've received three applications and the interview team, which would include uh, Doreen Crow and two, two school nurses will be interviewing, uh, I think, uh, next week. So, and they hope to have a decision on a recommendation by the end of next week. And that's the update. Great, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I apologize for interrupting. I had a confirmation that I was going to have an opportunity to speak in three minutes. Oh. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Yes, please come. No, 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 that's fine. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, no, please. It's over here by the microphone. Yeah. yeah. Um, could you just go ahead and give us your um, name and address for the record? Perfect. Thank you so much. And you have three minutes as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, so my name is Matt Miller. Um, I live in, on 42 Columbia Road. I've been a resident for a while. That's Precinct 11. I think everybody knows that. Um, so. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, just briefly, what I what I wanted to bring up was my daughter's education. Uh, she's gone to Arlington Public Schools uh, since kindergarten, and she's learned a lot. I, I have no complaints about it. Um, but I want to talk about Memorial Day and how she didn't understand what it was. So um, I think that it's important for children who have holidays that they would understand what a holiday is for. And if this holiday gives them the day off, they certainly should at least understand that there's a reason for it. It's for some kind of event or religious holiday or whatever it might be. But um, parents have a responsibility to teach as well. I'm not blaming the school for anything. But I think it is important for certain events to be recognized by the schools. And Memorial Day is one of them. And so when my daughter didn't understand what it was, I, I felt like, well, I mean, Stuff happens, she's in sixth grade. She just graduated from Gibbs. And I thought, well, that's, that's kind of how it goes. But then the reason I, I decided to write, write out, uh, to write an email was because she didn't know what D-Day was either. And I think D-Day is not a day off, but it's a day that is very important. And the people who attended that event, uh, the president was there. Uh, it happened 80 years ago, 
and there's people aren't going to be there anymore. They're just they're they're reaching an age now where they're they're probably going to pass. And so it was a it was a pretty major significant event, and she didn't know what it was. Uh, so I think that that was an oversight, and the fact that those two things happen, it's it's unfortunate. Um, I think that having uh, days off, even if it is religious, it is important to say at least what religion it is. If it's Passover, uh, my daughter doesn't need to know what that means, but she should know it's a Jewish holiday. I think that that's appropriate as well. And also, I think that um, no matter how you feel about war, D-Day was a very important day for America, and I think that that should be recognized, even if it's not celebrated as a day off. And I just wanted to speak out and I hope that you'll take that under consideration as maybe a requirement that you would put on your agenda for the, for the children. I know it's a busy time. Uh, you have a limited number of hours, but there's certain events that should be recognized. And that's, that's all I wanted to say. I'm not condemning anybody, but I, I, I'm glad that I had the chance to say it. I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, so our next item is the uh, approval and possible vote of a job description for an EL implementation specialist, Dr. Holman. Sure. So um, this uh, job description, the referring to tonight, we wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to uh, get approved before we head into the summer. Um, it is possible that we aren't able to fill this because the only uh, individual that we would fill it would be if it was budget able to be budget neutral. We're not sure if we're going to be able to fill this. The only instance in which we would would be if it was budget neutral. We do have um, the potential to be able to shift someone um, who's in a current role where we might be, um, where we might have some additional support, uh, or maybe perhaps a little more than we need to meet caseloads uh, available. So, in the event that someone were to be interested in this, who would have the skills um, in, in order to be able to do it, thank you. We would like to have someone available to really focus deeply on the EL implementation because we're about to head into the full rollout phase. A couple of things that we've heard from teachers this year is that the rollout, the logistics of the rollout are very intensive. Making sure that we have all of the materials that we need and the teachers know where to find them can be an intensive process. Um, that, you know, for a K 12 ELA director to fully give all of their time to the rollout is challenging because they are also needing to do a lot of responsibilities at the secondary level. And so this would be a one-year position to support the K-12 ELA director in the implementation of the new ELA curriculum at the elementary level. Um, they would be able to be fully present, paying attention to all of the log logistical considerations of that. And we'd really love to have somebody who has experience uh, working with students who are multilingual learners or students who require additional services such as might be on an IEP because one of the other things we heard from teachers throughout the uh, pilot process was that figuring out how to teach this curriculum it has some different expectations with regards to inclusion um, can be really challenging to sort of at once learn the new curriculum and figure out how to differentiate it. Uh, so if this person had some expertise in that area, they would be able to provide support to teachers and tools that would allow them to understand how do I teach this full class lesson and make sure that I'm doing so in a way that meets the needs of my English learners or in a way that meets the needs of a student who needs this adaptation um, to the instruction. So that is the purpose for the role. Um, we would post it internally and seek someone internal to fill the role and we're hoping we can do so in a way that doesn't require us to add it financially to the district's budget for FY25. Great, questions? Len. Uh, thank you, uh, it sounds like a great position. I think it's also, because it's her one year position, it, it's a perfect type of thing for one time funds which we have available. Mm -hmm. So I definitely would encourage you to post sooner rather than later and, and move forward. Okay. Even if even if it's not strictly cost neutral, Chrissy, um, 
I'm wondering about, it says terms of employment is 180 days, and I'm actually wondering if, given what you're saying, this person would be, or 183, um, it, given what this person is doing, it feels like they have stuff to do in the summer. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you're gonna skew their dates so they finish sooner or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it's a unit A position, and so we, it would be contractually 183 days. If we, we, I agree with you, I think, anticipate we would need some time in the summer, so that would have to be contracted time. So we would have to pay them probably at their per diem rate because it would be mm -hmm. doing the work that's in the job description. Um, but we would need to figure that out with whomever filled the role and based on sort of what availability they had depending on when we filled it, too. So, but they would be paid for some summer work in addition, okay. assuming that the person we hired had the availability to do that. Okay, great, thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. So that is, how many of us are here? Six. Six in favor. No abstentions, nobody opposed. Next item, budget transfers and motion. All right, yep, I will start and then I will pass it off to Mr. Farias who can answer any additional questions. Um, you have the proposal for budget transfers as including a motion uh, that includes the transfers per each uh, budget transfer category and this resultant um, allocation for each of those categories in front of you. It also includes the $400,000 additional appropriation um, from the town. I just want to note that while the vast majority of that $400,000 is listed under special education, um, it went towards TA salaries across the board and totaled in, in terms of uh, what it required us to put forward financially more than 400000 So that is reflected, that but that unit D increase is reflected in more than just um, that 400000 that's primarily allocated at special education in the transfer document. Um, there are a few reasons for some of these transfers. Um, one is we added paraprofessionals, particularly in some of our support learning centers and in one-to-one -one service for students whose IEPs required that additional staffing support. Um, as I noted, we increased paraprofessional salaries this year, mid-year. Um, we also were utilizing contracted services to fill some critical positions. Um, in special education, we had an increased cost for the professional development to support the rollout of the new curriculum and needed to cover software subscriptions that we had thought were cut the prior year but had not actually been reduced uh, in the subscriptions and we didn't want to disrupt teaching and learning and students access to those resources. And we also uh, increased and rolled out the support for the elementary breakfast program and some of the costs that are driving transfers are reflected because of that as well. Um, Mr. Farias and I are happy to answer any additional questions folks have about transfers. Questions? All right, seeing none. Um, there's a motion in our report. I'm so hoping I'll make, Dr. Donaldson Ampey will do that for us. I'll make the motion, but do I have to read all the numbers or can I just refer to the memo? <laughs> I'll refer. I think you can refer to the memo. Okay, so I move to approve the following, the, the FY24 budget transfers and adjustments A through F as outlined in the memo from today, uh, June 20th. Um, and they will result in the following spending from the town appropriation, um, also listed in the memo. So I move, I so move. Second. Great. Questions, comments, discussion? Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions? Great. Um, working group report, Dr. Holman. Okay. Um, I had had the goal to get this to you at our previous meeting and did not get all of those pieces together before then, so um, I wanted to bring you a working group update on the work that our working groups uh, for the strategic plan have done this year, and I'm going to talk a little bit about process, uh, purpose, framework, uh, 
just briefly, and then you have the actual report itself, which came from the working group members themselves um, in your materials for today. So just as a reminder, um, we developed these working groups at the beginning of the year with uh, support, thank you, um, from the Arlington Education Foundation to develop these groups. Their goal was for us, we had a, several goals when we built these groups. Um, one major one was to make sure that we were keeping the strategic plan work alive and helping our full community to understand what it was. We <coughs> wanted to build some cross-stakeholder understanding of the work of the district, um, and that includes an understanding of the things that are in the way of our ability to do some of these goals. Sometimes it can be hard um, for people to recognize obstacles if they're not actually trying to do the work right alongside us. Uh, we also wanted to establish a space for gathering representative feedback of for generation of some of our implementation plans for each of the initiatives. And one of my major goals in establishing this approach was to have a coalition of stakeholders that knows the work happening in a specific area, understands why we're trying to do it, and offers ideas that can spark some creativity or help us think about things in a different way um, that we may not have alone understood or considered. So that's why we created these working groups. Uh, we told AEF at the beginning of the year that the working groups would do the following things. One, gather data from schools and departments related to the initiative's goals and outcomes. Mm -hmm. Two, pilot some actions and bring them back to the group for refinement and recommendation or guideline development. Um, I have those two in bold because I would say those are the two things that you'll see most reflected in what they shared with you all um, for this year's work. We wanted them to gather input on proposed implementation plans and recommend or lead broader district level actions for school ILTs or other school based uh, departmental teams. I would say that is really the focus of next year. So I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do differently next year. Um, what working groups are not, and I just want to sort of establish some expectation here, um, they cannot really do the work of an entire initiative in part because they have different people from outside of the system itself who are not hired to actually do that work in them. Um, so they're not decision-making bodies. They are not sort of implementation. They're not the ones doing the implementation necessarily. They might be planning for it, building recommendations for what we should do, um, helping us discover perspectives that we hadn't discovered before. Uh, the strategic plan is the work of the whole system, and we have people in specific roles who are responsible for the implementation of our goals. So when we look at the goals for next year, we can point to departments that are responsible for each of those goals, and it is their job to make sure we move it forward. They might do so with the help of a working group that is gathering more data or going out and talking to folks who may be impacted by a plan that the department has. Um, and that's why members of the cabinet team are all leading a working group. It's a requirement of their role that they have that sort of interface um, with a group or that they are members of multiple groups. Um, and next year we're going to have a couple of cabinet members that are interfacing with multiple groups because the work hits their role in that way. So. Uh, this year, I'm going to lay out a little bit of what we did. We launched in September of 2024. That was administrators only. We dug into the strategic plan initiatives. This was the first year that the strategic plan was being implemented. Not all of our administrators had a deep understanding of what it said we had to go do as administrators, so we made sure that we had a clear sense of that. Um, administrators picked a group. <coughs> Everybody was required to do this last year as an administrator in the system so that they could build their own understanding of the strategic plan. In October and November, we, uh, the group started to develop some priority questions that they would use as a launch pad when they welcomed new members in, and they also started identifying what voices were missing from their, pri their initiative area. So they were like, we really need to hear from this kind of person who's had this kind of experience and tried to define who we would want to uh, welcome into the group, and then we started preparing for new membership in January. These groups met once a month for about two hours in the afternoon, um, and so that's what we did in the fall. And then in the spring, we actually welcomed new members into the group in January. Um, they had to do some norming, getting to know one another, uh, start collecting data from constituents. They used that data to infer inform a first action cycle. So one of the things we asked everybody to do was try to do something, try to go and not just gather information, but actually have an impact um, in the initiative area that you were, um, that you had chosen and were part of. I would say different groups did different levels of actually trying something new. Um, and you can probably see that reflected in the reports that they gave. We have told everybody that next year we want to expand the work, make it bigger, um, start to make recommendations that could inform FY26 budget development. And to that end, uh, we're going to try sort of a task-based approach, which I'll share in just a second. 
I did have a framework that we talked about at length in the working groups and that uh, I shared with folks as a way of grounding the work, um, and that is pictured here. So we built a sort of a common language around what's within my sphere of control, what's within my sphere of influence, and what's within my sphere of concern. And we were really trying to get people to not worry so much about their sphere of concern because you can't have as big of an impact there. So when we welcome new group members in, we said, like, as a parent, what you can control is very, it's a very small number of things. What you actually can directly influence yourself. What you can control most in life is yourself, for example. Your actions, your decisions, your behaviors. We wanted the working groups to be operating within their spheres of control or influence. So your sphere of influence is what you have the ability to shape that is sort of within your immediate relationships. Um, you can engage with other people who run in similar circles as you do, but you might not have direct control over what they do. Um, and so our spheres of influence were what we were trying to ask people to like go have an impact on if, in your actions. We didn't want people thinking so big that they wanted to try to overhaul the whole system from within a working group that only met two hours once a month. Um, and it's really easy to go straight there. This is wrong, it should look like this, we need to change it and tell everybody how to do it. Because what that can create is a lot of top-down initiatives. We really wanted them trying to operate within um, their role in the system and have an impact on that because we knew also that we didn't want them to get frustrated because they were trying to work too big and they needed to get to know one another um, really well before they would be able to build guidelines and uh, impact their area of concern that they had signed up for. So for next year, we're gonna make a few adjustments based on the feedback that we've gotten so far. Um, the two pictures here are from our very last day. Uh, we did a celebration in their small groups where they uh, shared gratitude with an another member of the group. And then the bottom right picture is our student, Letty, um, who was on the MTSS team. And she was presenting the work of that focal group and their recommendations for next year. We're hoping to do a few things next year a little bit differently. One is that we're gonna give each working group a specific task. You're working on this thing. You have an output that you are generating. Whether that is a revised district curriculum accommodation plan, for example, which is one of our goals in yeah, next year's goals, um, or it is a charge like the DEIBJ task force that we are developing and have advertised and have uh, asked people to apply to be a part of. So that group has um, a, a charge to develop initiatives and events and carry them out and connect with our climate and culture teams at each school. Uh, so, but whatever it is, each group will have a thing that they are charged with that's pretty specific. And that's because we don't want them to feel like they're wandering around trying to figure out what it is they are supposed to do. And because if you just look at the strategic plan, that can be really overwhelming. If we're in charge of these initiatives, that can feel like too much for a group of cross rural stakeholders that only meet once a month to actually tackle. Um, we're gonna do targeted membership and recruitment. So this will be um, us sort of saying, it makes the most sense for this group to be comprised of people with this specific expertise. And we need to make sure that we have people from these roles on this group. So we're really thinking about what's gonna enable this group to do something, whatever the task is, and be successful at it. In some cases, that means that we need people with, for example, expertise in interior design, if we're talking about inclusive spaces, or accessible technologies for learning, if we're talking about inclusive spaces. So we're gonna try to define that when we do calls for any group members that are, um, that are vacancies. We did ask everybody who's on working groups now if they wanna return for next year. If they've indicated that they do, then they get to stay because these people have developed relationships with one another and they'll be within the working groups in some way or another uh, according to their interest. But we'll probably also have some vacancies and some people who step out. So we'll be using these things to determine who gets back in um, or who we, uh, who we accept in from um, an interest application that we'll do in the fall. Uh, we are probably gonna have some working groups that have the working group itself and then an advisory panel. We wanna make sure that all stakeholders have an opportunity to weigh in on all of the work that we're doing, but it might make the most sense for people in certain roles to be on an advisory panel that's reviewing plans, but not necessarily having the expertise to sit and do them. Um, we also have family members who are like, I wanna be involved, but I can't do this many meetings and I can't do that amount of work, uh, but I'd love to serve on an advisory panel and look over 
um, drafts of something, for example. So we're going to have some working groups that also have an advisory panel, and I'll show that in a sec. Um, and then we're also going to reconfigure some of the working groups um, to accommodate the completion of those needed tasks. So some of the, the working group focus areas are changing. So I'll walk through that next. These are the working groups that existed this year. The ones that are in bold are undergoing reconfiguration or consolidation of some kind. So they're either being split out into multiple groups or they might be collapsed into a single group. You'll notice that all of the priorities three and four ones are undergoing some degree of reconfiguration. Um, the only ones that are kind of staying as are, they were this year is instructional <coughs> vision and recruitment and retention. And then these are the 2024, 20, 25, and I'll talk a little bit about what's adjusting here. So 1.1 is basically the same, but it's going to focus really deeply <coughs> on expanding deeper learning. Number two is the, was the belonging group. This is going to be the community task force that I was talking about and that we've been advertising for. So we're hoping that that task force will sort of be the working group around belonging um, and focused on all sorts of issues and initiatives surrounding developing belonging um, across the system. The MTSS group is sort of dividing out into a couple different groups, one focused on updating the DCAP and one focused on chronic absenteeism. The asterisks that are next to those are uh, indicating that they're comprised primarily of staff on the working group, but will have an advisory committee uh, attached to them. And that has to do with sort of the type of work that's involved and also wanting to do as much of that during the working day as we can, but acknowledging that we need people to look over our implementation plans for each of those things. Uh, the Professional Development Committee is contractual, so it's actually it's written into the AEAA and D contracts um, that we have a Professional Development Committee, that this committee worked with the Deputy Superintendent to weigh in on and help design professional development, and so we're consolidating efforts in an effort to have a working group actually be one of the committees we have to have anyway. Uh, recruitment and retention stays. Um, inclusive learning spaces gets uh, sort of collapsed into one of the other groups that was focused on um, after school. We're still going to keep working on after school. I have spoken with our after school director about increasing enrollment for next year, and space is part of that, but we really want this group to focus on a technology and space plan for the schools, and so that will be their charge is to get that plan generated and done and to the committee. Um, and then another one that is sort of a recalibration of the Welcome Center it is going to be focused on cultivating new community connections and making sure our families are well connected with all of the resources in town and that we have resources for families who come into town to help them get connected to all of those resources. Um, and I, was, I heard about some exciting new work on that front already happening that was generated by some of the ideas uh, that happened in the working group this year. So that's the sort of recalibration of working groups. I'm happy to chat with anyone more about this or to answer any questions now. It's still forming at the moment, the plan for next year, but I wanted to be sure to share some of the adjustments that we're planning on making based on the feedback we've gotten. Great, thank you. Questions, comments? Dr. Allison Ampey. Thank you. Um, thanks for the update. So one question I had that, uh, I'm having a hard time doing the mic in my notes. Um, with the working groups, I know that there were staff or, or senior staff in, in each group, but I'm wondering, did anyone actually run the, you know, was in charge of yeah. the group? So, so, yes, so there are working group facilitators. All cabinet members were working group facilitator this year. Okay. And then we had other administrators who we said, are you interested in doing this? It's an additional multi-hour commitment because you have mm -hmm. to develop the agenda for the group. Um, we did a lot of sort of sharing like here's what our group's working on, here's what's working, here's what's not, like help me think through that. Um, and we had planning meetings once a month for two hours mm -hmm. ahead of each working group meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and there was additional funding that supported that. Those facilitators will stay on next year but they'll shuffle a little bit just because we need some different um, support in a couple areas, like the Professional Development Committee. Dr. Ford Walker was working on the, uh, the deeper learning, but we'll need to be involved in the Professional Development Committee. So we're going to probably shuffle things around a little bit, and then we probably have some facilitators who won't want to come back and do that. We were pretty explicit that the facilitators are facilitators. They're not in charge so much of the group as they are in charge of making sure that the meetings run smoothly, that there is an agenda that they're taking the input of the group members in developing the agenda, 
um, but we didn't want it to seem like it was their committee. Uh, so, yes, that's okay. how that operated. Yeah, that, that answers my question. So I guess, unlike many people at the table, I don't have a strong professional background in, in things except for school committee and stuff, but I just, I'm thinking in my experience, if you're looking for actual output, it helps to have someone whose mm -hmm. role it is to make sure you actually get the output. And I don't, I honestly don't know how to work that if you're working with the framework that you're discussing. <coughs> Um, with a facilitator and a group and and but my concern is just whether if you're really trying to ramp up the output of the groups whether the structure of them is one that will make it happen and if not do you want to rethink the structure of it well I think that's why some of the groups will be primarily staff with an advisory committee because that lets the staff generate the thing mm -hmm. with the facilitator. The facil and like I said, all cabinet members, if you look at our goals yep. for the year, you can connect a department from mm -hmm. the senior cabinet team to one of those things. Mm -hmm. As the, like we're facilitators of these groups. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility at the end of the day for doing something like um, launching the community task force for DEIBJ, that's on Dr. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And for making sure that that team is productive in doing what it's charged to do, that's where that sort of accountability r rests for any one of us, the professional development committee mm -hmm. with Dr. Ford Walker, for example, um, implementing our recruitment and retention plans with Mr. Spiegel. Mm -hmm. So that's why the facilitators are members of our team, because our goals are tied to the work that's happening on these task force mm -hmm. forces, but that's also why we're giving each working group a task. You will do this at the beginning of the year because okay. it's clear what the output's supposed to be. We did not do that this year. That was okay. purposeful. We were getting started. Mm -hmm. We weren't sure how this was going to go. I don't have a lot of models of what cross-stakeholder implementation of a strategic plan that involves so many people mm -hmm. um, can look like. Mm -hmm. And we wanted relationships to develop in a space that felt um, safe and like we're going to help people really get a sense of what it is we're trying to do here, mm -hmm. which meant they did a lot of research and mm -hmm. talking to people and coming to conclusions that this plan already lays out, I mm -hmm. think, in a lot of ways, and that we kind of know we need to work on. Mm -hmm. But it's helpful when people have their own understanding of that and have come to that by talking to multiple people or taking a look at all of the documentation we have in the district. And so they spent a lot of time this year doing that. Next year, the hope is we give them a task. There is a clear output and a clear sense of who's responsible for that and guiding that work along. Okay. I'm sorry. I, can I ask one more question? Um, so the only other question is what about things that weren't done or, or were expected to be uh, done next year, but now the group has disappeared in the topic? Um, specifically, I'm looking at the um, for the communications group, it says Estab establish expectations surrounding <laughs> what engagement and communications between families and staff can, can and should look like at different stages of the student experience in APS. And yeah. with the next gen that you're talking about for next year, I don't see that being part of any of the buckets. So I would say that's in our goals for next year because it's, mm -hmm. there's a, one of our district goals says that mm -hmm. we will do that. Um, and that's now the work of the family engagement team and communications okay. teams and could live in cultivating new community connections also because part of how you establish what to expect in terms of what you're going to get from your school and what connections exist that the school can plug you into mm. is by being clearly communicated with and knowing what to expect around that communication. So. I'd say that's a that's living work, like what they mm -hmm. said they were going to go do next. We're going to go do next. Okay. Um, but it doesn't necessarily need, it might need to gather feedback. It might require this group to take a look at what we're doing and give feedback on it, but it doesn't necessarily require a group to go and do. It requires a department to go and do, and we have that. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. Thoman. Yeah, uh, just quick questions. The groups, how many, you, you, how many meetings do you anticipate they're gonna have? So we are being a little more flexible around how we're using time next year, in part because this was a challenge for some people that we always met on Thursday for two hours in the evening. It meant that some people would miss one or two and then our uh, participation would fluctuate. So each group is going to basically be told, you can anticipate meeting once a month, the group will decide when it meets with the facilitator. The facilitators will continue to meet once a month to plan and to share what their plans are and to share agendas so that that mechanism still exists for us to keep an eye on what's going on. Um, but the groups will meet once a month, at least once a month, and do external work to the group for about two hours a month. Um, so people can anticipate putting three hours a month into the work, but some of it may be asynchronous, some of it may be synchronous meeting time, and the facilitators have the ability to say, you know, during these two months we really need to meet every couple weeks, but then for the next couple months we're all gonna go work on this document together, and we can do that asynchronously, and then we can come back together in a couple of months. So we're trying to give people latitude, depending on what the group needs to do to figure out what their meeting plan is going to be. And a, and a lot of the work, presumably, will be to inform next year's goals and kind of initiatives, or it depends on the group. Okay. Um, I would say DEIBJ is specifically around doing some work now out in the community and yep. um, connecting with the climate and culture or DEI teams at each school that will be ex in existence at the start of next year. Uh, expanding deeper learning, that work's gonna be sort of right now work, like tell everybody what we think deeper learning is, what it looks like in the classroom, find examples of it, make it grow. Um, but a professional development committee is gonna be advising on opening day starting this summer. So that's gonna be happening right away. <laughs> um, but then other ones like updating the DCAP, that's updating a document that exists currently in the district that has some good resources and tools and language in it that teachers currently use and that could be framed as a different kind of tool to give teachers different resources or to sort of frame the resources that are there in terms of MTSS, which is the framework we're trying to use. So that's more developing something that will be used next year and perhaps used differently next year. Got it, okay, thank you. Mr. Cardin. Um, so just following up on that, a specific question about the MTSS initiative and the DCAP. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at our DCAP and other DCAPs around the state, they're mostly documents that fulfill the state requirement and aren't very useful to families. Mm -hmm. So the original goal for MTSS, you know, was to audit the existing practices and sort of build a, a model of what MTSS is. The DCAP is sort of a little bit different. So are we are we getting away from that original goal or do you anticipate that DCAP is going to, to have a vision for what MTSS looks like? So our goal is to make the DCAP frame a vision for what MTSS looks like okay. and how it operates in our schools. And there are DCAPs that do that around the state, but not most of them. I'd say most of them, I would agree with you, most of them are fulfilling the state's checkbox. Um, ideally, they're a more used tool that people that, and families and teachers find useful. Um, and we almost, like I, we considered having another working group under this priority focused on one of the other things that's in the district goals, which is SST. We're hoping to have some guidelines around SST next year. This is something we can just do without needing to necessarily right. have a working group around it. Yeah. And we plan to, but the reason why we're gonna wait to maybe put the SST group in place the following year is so that we have a decap to work off of when we do that work. Okay. Um, and then chronic absenteeism group is also an MTSS group. They're, the goal of that group is to specifically look at tiered intervention relative to absenteeism and implement some things. Great, thanks. Our DCAP is 22, right? That's when we did that. Hmm? We did our DCAP in 2022? We Thanks. did an update to it in 22. Oh. Um, it wasn't a, what I would say a comprehensive update to match it up to the MTSS framework, but we have gone through it recently and updated it. Anybody else? Great, thank you, Dr. Holman. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go back to you for an update. 
Okay, I don't have um, much of an update besides to say enrollments are in your materials. Apologies for what I pulled up at a budget subcommittee meeting earlier this week. Um, my formulas were not correct, so thank you, Mr. Carden, for helping me fix that. They are now um, in the projection sheet that you have. I do want to name, because we heard about it from a um, uh, member of the public earlier in the meeting, that right now Hardy uh, is at about 21.3 average students per class which means that there will be a couple, there will be one class with 22 students, a couple classes with 21. I am keeping an eye on class sizes there. And at Pierce, which is currently at an average of 22 at the kindergarten level, um, we have added, because we went up over 70 students, a fourth section of first grade at Stratton. Uh, and those are most of the hotspots I'm keeping an eye on. I also have a pretty close eye on grades two and three at Thompson. Um, but as we've discussed, there's not the space. We are maintaining the uh, inclusion specialists that we had added at that school last year um, to help out in spaces where we have larger class sizes. <coughs> Questions, comments? Uh, consent agenda. <coughs> All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence warrant number 24315 dated 6 11 2024 in the amount of one million six hundred and forty thousand three hundred and sixty nine dollars and nine cents and the school committee draft meeting minutes uh, dated uh, June 5th 2024 looks so for a motion thank you second great uh, all in favor yes yes opposed abstentions um, subcommittee liaison reports and announcements. Um, budget, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, budget met on Tuesday and we reviewed the uh, transfer numbers that you saw and we will be planning a meeting sometime. I think we'll probably try and get something together over the summer. Great. Uh, community relations, Ms. Exton. Um, we met, I'm trying to remember, We the buffer zones was after the last meeting. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or no, it was the same day, and then day. I wasn't here. I think I reported on it briefly Okay. in your absence. There is a, a presentation in Novus from Dr. Holman, if committee members would like to read more about it. Great. Um, CIA, that's me. We met last week, no. The week before, I'm not sure, we met uh, recently to discuss the program of studies at the high school and some changes to the um, sort of structure around some of the history classes. Um, and we heard from Dr. Homan and Dr. Janger um, and had a good conversation and have some clear plans moving forward. Uh, facilities, Mr. Thielman. We met on June 11th. We um, got a report on the Addison Middle School bus, which started in February and will continue next year. There were 38 students who registered, and their, the capacity of the bus is 44. Um, there is one stop, and uh, so that will continue. We um, had a discussion about the technology plan. We had a very good discussion about technology needs in the district and how our needs are greater than our what, well, it appears to be greater than our financial resources at this point in time, but that's something that uh, probably the budget subcommittee needs to look into. We, <clears throat> um, got to check my notes. We spoke, uh, we got an update in the bracket playground. Um, we're trying to, the district is trying to make sure there's enough funding to do everything we want to do with that playground. Uh, Dr. Holman is moving some of her staff to um, Maple Street in the payroll department. We got a report on building capacity uh, for Air conditioning, it looks like the Thompson School will have air conditioning by the spring of 25. Dr. Holmes, is that Yes, that's yep. correct. And um, other schools, it's going to take a little bit longer. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Um, policy, Mr. Carden? Uh, no report. Uh, high School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman? We put up the last beam last week. It was a great day. Some of you were there. It was a wonderful day, and uh, it's kind of, that's the last beam to go up, so it was very exciting. Great. Uh, liaison reports? Announcements? Yes, Dr. Allison. Andy. This isn't a, sorry, just a second. Or is it a future agenda item? No, no, it's neither. It's, it's 
building committee. I'm just trying to figure out how to. Okay, uh, we had talked about the plaque and there, at our last meeting, and I know there was uh, concern about what names were going to be on it, and I'm sorry, I just got this before the meeting, so I can't show you, but this is the draft of what the uh, architects have sent back to us for the potential plaque, and it has Arlington High School at the top with the year, dedicated to Arlington's teachers, uh, students, teachers, and staff, um, a picture of the front entrance, and then has blurbs, and down over here it has all school committee members who have been members past and present since we began working on the high school. Um, so you're all noted, and uh, you have been requested to make sure that your names have been spelled correctly, so I hope they are. Uh, including me, Mr. Thielman. Send that to me again, please. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say direct. Um, please, if you get and it. And the blurb that we we landed on are is uh, the Arlington Public Schools sincerely, sincerely, sorry, sincerely thank the Arlington community for their support for this new high school. Begun in 2015 with phased construction between 2020 and 2025. The environmentally sustainable building was intentionally designed for teaching excellence, supporting inquiry, collabor collaboration, creativity, social emotional growth, and community engagement. It is our hope it will provide an enduring educational setting to empower Arlington's children to shape the future and understand the past. We are also grateful to the many people and partners whose tireless work made this school possible. Um, future agenda items that I may or may not pass along to Mr. Schlickman. Okay, seeing none, that's really a good idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, let's just, okay. So, uh, executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and this chair so declares and we intend to return. This is my understanding. I'm looking for a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, do we have to do, oh, we don't have any, no. Uh, all, do we have to do a roll call? We have to, no, we have to, call. to go into executive session. Yeah. Super, let's do that. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey, yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Gittleson, and yes. I also vote yes. Great, uh, we are back here in regular session and um, Dr. Homan, would you like to, or Mr. Spiegel, could we get the, the short version for the public on what we're voting to approve? You want me to explain yeah, you want to. So, right. so this is an MOA with the AEA which allows for uh, staff members who would be taking a leave of absence due to the birth of a child um, in their family anyway next school year, um, the ability to access that benefit if their child is born between July 1st and the start of the opening of this agreement. And this will not impact very many staff members, um, not have a significant impact on the FY25 budget and allow for staff members who who are taking a leave due to the birth of a new family member to do so in a consistent manner throughout the remainder of <clears throat> their time here in Arlington. So, but really for next school year. Great, thank you. Mr. Thielman. I move that we approve the memorandum of, under, of agreement as uh, explained by Dr. Homan and direct the vice chair to sign on behalf of the school committee. Second. Great, questions, comments? Um, roll call vote, Mr. Cardin? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Goodelson? Yes. And I am also yes. And I am happy to sign it. Um, I think that concludes our June 20th agenda. So I am looking for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Yes. 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 Right. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for everybody's hard work this Thank year. You. Thank you. We did it. Thanks for your support. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.